You already know that zebra mussels and quagga mussels are invasive species that can cause big problems around the Great Lakes. After their population exploded in the 80s and 90s, invasive mussels were enveloping docks, seawalls, sunken cars, and adhering to any type of hard surface they could find. So now, it takes some old-fashioned elbow grease to keep them at bay. Today, we introduce you to one team that developed the right tools for the job. It's freezing cold. You stay in the water for four or five hours on certain tasks. You gotta deal with current. There's a lot of different things that the divers actually go through in a day. And it can be, it can be as mentally challenging as it is physically challenging for them. Your mind can really wander when you're in pitch black for hours and hours on end. Some of the most skilled construction jobs around our region are performed in the Great Lakes, underwater by teams of commercial divers. Keith Meir is the president of Commercial Diving and Marine Services near Port Huron, Michigan. His divers are called upon to perform a variety of tasks. They're not just a diver, they're also pipe fitters, construction workers, iron workers, carpenters, pile drivers, you name it. They're, they're a jack of all trades. Today, they're measuring the thickness on a retaining wall to see if it needs replacing. But before they can do that, they have to clean a layer of invasive mollusks off the wall. In order for us to do our job, a lot of times we have to remove the mussels in order to you know, get to what we need to work on. Uh, whenever we're in the power plants, uh, a lot of the structures are 100% covered with uh, an inch thick of zebra mussels, you can't even see them. Over the years, Keith and his team developed a pretty effective method of removing the invasive mussels, what they call zebra blasting. Carl, you ready for the blaster? Yep. What it does is it just, it just obliterates the mussels. They just turn into little tiny fragments and then the, uh, the algae and everything, it strips it right away. It gets into the places that the scrubber can't get. You know, it's two and a half feet across, so all the little nooks and crannies, it's either that or you gotta scrape them by hand, so okay. I use that whenever we can. You go ahead and start up the blaster. Today we'll be using the scrubber to actually scrub flat walls, get zebra mussels off. Yeah, anytime you're ready on that one, Carl. I'm just following diver one on what he's doing right now. He's cleaning the outside of the pans. Diver two is just sort of looking him, uh, over his shoulder right now, just trying to follow what he's doing, but the uh, visibility is pretty poor. How's that looking, Ted? Looking good on yours. Looks like we've got one more sheet after this one to do, and that's far enough. All right, there. All right. Each time a tender, the person keeping watch from the deck, provides a tool to the diver, it's part of an efficient mechanical process. The divers will have water blasters, high pressure pressure washers underwater, and they'll clean all the bars off. When they clean the bars off, the muscles fall to the bottom. They're, they're negative buoyant, so they lay on the bottom. And then we'll go in with a hydraulic scrubber. It's a double wheeled scrubber, and it's got steel brushes on it. And the divers can ride those up and down the walls, and they can go back and forth. And then we go back in with hand scrapers or water blasters again and get all the corners and pipelines and whatever else is in the water intake. And then we go in with a hydraulic submersible pump and the divers will actually suck all the, the mud, muscle sticks out of the bottom of the intake. And then we send it to a machine that we've developed, we call it a mud separator. It will actually separate the zebra mussels and the mud and the sticks from the water. All of the equipment they're using has been entirely customized to help one of their biggest clients. Power plants. Power plants keep Keith and his divers pretty occupied. Their submerged cooling water intakes can pull in up to half a million gallons of water per minute, if thousands of zebra mussels haven't parked right in the middle of the action. Now these are very common species here. Matt Shackelford studies zebra mussels for Detroit Energy Company, DTE. It's a problem they've been dealing with since the late 80s, when zebra mussels first hitched a ride to the Great Lakes through ballast water. Ballast water is used to balance the ship on its voyage across the ocean. And once it gets to the location to let off its cargo, it releases that ballast water. That ballast water is full of organisms. And in the 1980s, it was full of zebra mussel larvae, which quickly colonized the Great Lakes. When zebra mussels first came into the Great Lakes, we were already doing maintenance and power plants, and our divers started noticing that the steel structures or the, the concrete walls, 
They started having a, like a sandpaper feel to them. And upon closer inspection, we started noticing that these were juvenile zebra mussels. And throughout the next couple of years, there was just a, an explosion of the zebra mussels. My predecessors here at the company immediately started to notice them. And they were attaching to everything, not just power plant intakes, but drinking water intakes. It became a huge issue for any industry that uses water. When DTE wanted Keith's divers to get rid of the mussels, the commercial diving team had to improvise. We would take a fire hose and hook it on our backs, on our, on our tank on our back, with a little nozzle pointing straight behind us, turn the fire hose on, press the diver against the wall, and he would just sit there with a hand scraper and just scrape all day long. Then we got into the hydraulics of running scrubbers and then water blasters. And now we've advanced to the point where we're just in and out that quick and cleaning these muscles out. If zebra mussel levels are allowed to spike too high, they can block the cooling water intakes, forcing an unscheduled shutdown and slowing electricity production. The removal of zebra mussels now is just integrated into our preventative maintenance programs for all of our units at our power plants. And at that time, commercial divers are called in to do their thing, and they remove all the muscles while that unit's down. There's been a lot of people have tried different chemicals and different methods to clean or to uh, deter the growth of, of muscles. But the mechanical means is still necessary because when you start using a chemical in the water, you can't put that chemical into an open waterway where the fish are living. Researchers at the power plant tested what they call a coupon, a piece of sheet metal coated with a chemical compound. The coupon was added to a water sample in order to find out how zebra mussels would react. Eventually, the compound would break down and the zebra mussels would colonize, or just the expense of coating and recoating equipment, it was really more cost effective to our customers to have commercial divers come in and mechanically remove them. We got enough clean on that, Carl. We can go ahead and uh, switch over to the scrubber. As long as zebra mussels are in the Great Lakes, power plants will likely depend on the zebra blasting method to keep the lights on. Yet the day in, day out work of commercial divers remains mostly out of view. Coming down, Carl. Right here. We are very invisible. You'll see mill rights running around, you'll see pipe fitters, you'll see iron workers running around, and then you got four or five divers cruising around in a little tiny building, going into places that people don't believe people even go. You don't see anything for two, three hours. All you see is just black water and a few bubbles. And but there's a diver down there doing his job, keeping a plant going. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.